ZVE1. Compared to the ZVE10, it's like 30% more. It's a full frame. Way bigger sensor. Ta-da! Top G lens, 16 by 35, f4, which is not that bright, but the sensor can handle it. And the lens itself has a lock, iris lock. Here it feels so nice. And on the other side, we have a power zoom, dedicated button to customize whatever you like to it, and autofocus. The rings itself, wow, feels very nice. Microphone, USB Type-C for charging, memory card, micro HDMI, which is not great, but it is what it is, and headphones. And on the bottom, we do have for the battery. This is for my stand, whatever. Let's turn it on. The screen is touch sensitive, so you can record. Look at that power zoom. Damn. It is great and silent. You can make insane videos with that zoom. Anyway, let's stop the recording. Let's hit the menu. I, I don't like how the menu is at the top. Should be somewhere around here. We be much better. Anyway, let's stick with the main features because it's like too many of them and this video will be too long. File formats. That's all of them. I'm mostly using an SI version, which is most powerful. Uh, let's start with a HS in 4K. And then here you can choose between the frame rate and uh, different record settings. I'm not, I'm never gonna use those. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. S. There you go. Oops. There's also a HD, but who's gonna record in HD with this camera? No one, my friend, no one. Forget about the HD. This one is most important. This one is most important because it could give you a maximum experience in different frame rates. There's also 120 with a newer firmware, but I'm not gonna update the firmware yet. And this is how it looks like in the maximum settings. Unfortunately, I didn't bring uh, that cat for the microphone. It is a bit windy, so you could hear a little bit of noise. I have a wireless microphone in there, but let's start with, the, with that microphone on the AI should track my voice it is set to auto ai i'm behind the camera i'm on the side of the camera this should track my voice how cool is that let's continue with a different microphone oh and the showcase mode should be available is it focusing on the mic instead of my face auto framing what does that mean i have to touch to a subject and it should track me it is tracking me nicely and now if i move it should move with me. It should, in theory. But I think I, it lost me a little bit. Come on, find me. Find me again, all right, all right. Sony advertised it as a vlogging camera. What does that mean? It means video stabilization test. But before we start, the lens I'm using, 16 by 35 G lens, has no video stabilization at all. Only the body has uh, some video stabilization, so that is not a great lens for vlogging. Full length of my arm sensor video stabilization. It is shaky. It is. Now we can switch during the recording to a steady, steady mode. It looks the same. There's also an active mode with a little bit of crop. Now it's much better, but we do have a crop, but it's much better. Now there's another mode, but you have to turn off the recording first. Okay, the full length of my arm. It looks very stable, fantastically stable, but not like smartphones. There's another way to do it with a Catalyst browser. That's an app for Windows and maybe for a Mac too. I'm using Windows. 
so you can upload the footage to that browser and it will stabilize the video. Let me show it to you. How stable that is. Well, it looks stable. A little bit of crop. But is it stable like a smartphone stable? Like a proper flagship smartphone? Link in the description for this one. Let's find out. And with the video optical stabilization, wow, it looks extremely stable and the video quality itself looks amazing. Huge lenses on this one. This is a Vivo X100 Pro. Link in the description for you. Well, the video itself is very close to the APS-C camera. And that is very impressive. Of course, audio won't be that great like in a proper camera with a big microphone. This one is, it has like three very tiny microphones. So, but of course you can buy a separate microphone, a wireless microphone, and it'll be cool. With the smartphone, you can do telephoto immediately. Of course, you can change the lens, but this will take time and time is money. And with the telephoto, you know, the slouch, wow. Very impressive for, for Vivo. Damn, can go even 10x. That's crazy. And of course, with the main sensor, we do have that beautiful bokeh effect. So I can see, it's great. Cinematic mode is really cool. There is one feature was a deal breaker for me that's no crop in 4K 60. At the moment we are on a 4K 30. 4K 60, zero crop. Pictures come out really great. It all depends what lens are you using. This is wide angle lens, so it's all wide. It's still like really good pictures. There will be a link in the description for you to download original samples. It's basically a night vision sensor. Even with lens f4 could give you a maximum experience. That is crazy. And manually, of course, I can do something insane. Look at it. <laughs> it's basically daylight. <laughs> It will recognize cars, planes, all kinds of stuff. Screen visibility, pretty decent, full sun. You can stream in 4K and do all kinds of stuff. You can connect a smartphone to monitor your video and control the camera of the smartphone. Tons of features, but this video will be too long. It has the same sensor, sensor than FX3, which is a cinema professional camera, and S. 7 S3, those names, also like 50% more expensive. And FX3 is 100% more expensive, twice more expensive, same sensor, same quality. That is insane. So why it's twice more expensive? Well, it has definitely a better body. That cinema FX3 body is amazing. This one has an okay body. It's, it doesn't feel cheap. Huh, it is not. Proper body. You can, can hear the video stabilization. Nice. Mm, but it's not waterproof. It's not the same and it also has one slot for the memory. So I wouldn't do weddings if stuff which you wouldn't repeat. Then I wouldn't do that. Uh, important stuff, very important stuff. No, 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 no. For vlogging, it's great. It has a tendency to overheating. It didn't overheat on me because I have a different style of shooting. I'm a YouTuber, so I'm sure like one minute here, two minutes there, three minutes here. A minute here, 30 seconds here. This is how the videos are now on, on YouTube. For longer shooting, I've seen on YouTube people shooting like more than an hour in 4K 30 and 20, 30 minutes in 4K 60. It all depends on the temperature. For me, it's fantastic. Half the price, maximum quality. Of course, if you want a smartphone, which is more convenient, link in the description for you. I will use that camera for all my videos. Oh, most of them, at least in the studio. To show you the maximum experience for those smartphones, filming in 60 frames per second without the crop, watching that 120 Hertz screen, it should be beautiful. I was thinking also about FX30, which is a cinema camera, but in APS-C, the depth of view in full frame is amazing. This is it, link in the description you will be satisfied.
Thanks for watching. See you next video. Bye.